the Surfer of Life. Today I'm here in Helsinki on backstage with Hollywood Vampire's bassist Chris Wise. Welcome to Surfer of Life. Thank you. Great having you here. Uh, what about now? The show starts pretty soon. Is there any preparation before the show? Uh, for me, it's just I like just to relax and, and just uh, kind of have it quiet if, I, if possible, you know? If there's not too many people around, I just like to chill. You've been touring now over 30 years, am I correct? Pretty much, yeah, yeah pretty much, definitely. Uh, started started pretty young and uh, touring in vans and stuff like that and graduated to buses and planes and stuff. So um, yeah, I've been doing it a long time, yeah. How has it changed during these years? Um, it, it doesn't... The essence of everything doesn't change, you know, like even when I was playing a small club or, or a big festival or something like this, um, for me, uh, it's the same kind of thing, same preparation, uh, it's the same job essentially, whether there's, you know, a thousand people or 10,000 people or whatever, so uh, for me it's all about just kind of, just relaxing and, and, and being comfortable, you know, is really what it's about. Just letting the show happen. I already did all the work, so you know, just kind of um, being in a tranquil place before the show, and, and just the same stuff all the time, you know. And uh, trying to get some yoga in and take care of my neck and back with all the bass playing, you know. And um, just let it happen. That's what music's all about, you know. Not not being too rigid. Every night's different. Enjoy the flow. Yeah, exactly. How heavy it is to play bass? You play actually double bass, right? Yeah. Um, bass and a... I have an electric uh, double bass out here oh, with yeah. me, and uh, it's great. It sounds fantastic, super deep, and I also play with a bow. I play German style bow. Ah. Um, the German style bow is a bigger frog, so you kind of hold it like that, uh, and and you play with it like that, as opposed to the French bow, which is on the outside. Uh, you see like, the violin, the cello, the viola, all like kind of a French bow style. So I kind of prefer the German bow. It feels a little more, um, you know, I don't know, maybe it's more rock or something for me. But uh, yeah, and I get to run my bass through effects and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's it can keep up with loud guitars and all that. So that's a really cool aspect of, of this show. I get to do it on a couple songs. And uh, I also have a band called Owl. Owlintheband.net, and I feature a lot of bass stuff in that band too. Where, you know, for years, bass players would have bloody fingers because they just couldn't keep up with the volume of everything. And then the big uh, bass, is, you know, is acoustic, so it's hard to amplify it. And uh, I spent many years working on amplifying it, and then finally found a really great electric upright bass that, that is great sounding, and it's called the Messenger, and it's a great, great sounding bass. But it is heavy and take, takes a toll on your back a bit, you know? And, uh, but it's really great to amplify an upright bass. It's a, it's a beast, you know, it sounds really fat and big. Right. Yeah. How do you keep yourself in shape? You told me that there's something on your back probably because it's heavy to have the double bass and the German style. Yeah, it's very physical. Um, and the shows are really physical. Um, I also play with Ace Fairly from Kiss and, uh, that's a real physical show and I do a bass solo every night and that'll start adding up and uh, basically yoga has been a big help for me, you know. I try and do it a good few times a week. Um, and there's a lot of great classes out there nowadays, you can just like on YouTube and you can download and so on. So I've been doing a lot of Ashtanga yoga, which is really great. And again, it's that tranquil thing, you know, I've been doing it for many years so it's like, it's you just want to be in a really kind of calm space and then, then it all happens and the show is sweaty and physical and you know yeah. I, get, I get it out there but definitely yoga I like to run a bit too in the gym if I can on the treadmill you know just break a sweat before the show and that kind of clears it you know starts me over again for the next show How was it for you when you started playing? Or did you realize that how physical it is right from the beginning or did you understand that you need to do some physical exercises as well when you started well, playing? When I started playing, uh, I was inspired by Iron Maiden, Steve Harris, and there's that, that very physical kind of bass playing, and uh, I, I just, I got very addicted to Steve Harris, and I had to learn everything he was doing, and uh, 
So the bass itself can be a little bit of a physical workout, but um, you know, I, I, that's that's the aspect I enjoy. It's almost like a, a very physical type of bass playing. You know, not not just casual. You know, kind of aggressive at times. But you do it when a song calls for it as well. It doesn't always have to be aggressive, of course. You know, sometimes just holding down the fort is good. You know, but uh, yeah, Steve Harris was my original inspiration and very physical finger style yeah. um, and to me that that became like almost like you know sports I got very uh, competitive and wanted to be able to play everything under the sun you know and, uh, very inspired by Steve Harris and then that led to double bass later on I went to college and picked up the double bass so I could go to school for music at the time in upstate New York and uh, that was really a challenge because I could already play and then I was holding a bow, just trying to get one note, you know, in tune, and the fretless aspect. So, um, <clears throat> again, technique and, uh, and focus and stuff like that is, is really what it's, you know, what you rely on, you know. How important it is to find new, for yourself new challenges, like you said, you stepped on a different instrument. Well, it's interesting, uh, in the Hollywood Vampires, um, there's a song that has like a rockabilly kind of edge to it where um, I don't, this was kind of new for me, I don't do it all the time, but I don't really play rockabilly, I do more of a heavy, classical, hard rock kind of uh, thing, but in this, uh, in this set I'm doing one song with like the kind of rockabilly slapping, getting the percussive oh, yeah. thing on the bass, which is really fun. So uh, I would say, you know, uh, I'm always looking for new stuff. You know, and the rockabilly thing is, is like kind of new for me, so I'm having a lot of fun with that. And it's physical, you know, you're really, you're really getting the percussive slap on the, uh, on the bass, on the strings. It's really fun. It's called, this song's called Bushwhackers. We've been playing it every night. Yeah. So right. tonight is on. Tonight, well. Yeah, tonight I'll be doing it. And um, I'm playing upright bass also on uh, Heroes, David Bowie's song Heroes, and Johnny's singing that. That's really cool. That's more of a, a just a deep groove bass thing, and I do a little bow at the end of it as well. So um, I'm always trying to push it a little bit and, and stylize what I do a little bit uniquely, and try and find my own voice, you know, with the bass. And um, and I sing too. So uh, I'm doing Lemmy Ace of Spades. So I got to get my Lemmy uh, gravel on for that song, which is really great. Really great song playing playing in suspense with these guys. You know, I got Joe Perry and Johnny and Tommy and Alice and, and Glenn. It's just a fantastic band, you know. And uh, just it's it's a very creative, fun band to be in. I'm doing a lot of different stuff in the set, so I think everyone's enjoying it. It's really cool, and I like the I like the. Uh, look I get when I come out with the upright bass and it's like whoa what is that because you don't see it all the time in, in hard rock you know so uh, always looking for new stuff and probably the most difficult stuff I do is is, is at this point um, well in the A set I do a full on bass solo so you know you have to really engage the crowd with, with something interesting you know and that's going over great and um that's very physical. I do a lot of two-hand tapping and stuff like that, piano-esque kind of stuff. And then the bow is probably, probably one of the most uh, demanding things when you really commit to bow parts like that, you know, because of the tuning and technique and very different. So there's a lot underneath the bass. Uh, what am I trying to? A bass umbrella. There's there's tons there. There's tons to get into. I'm still working on, on everything that I do. I'm still pushing myself. Definitely. What about on stage? You told me that you get get in this sort of a flow moment. Uh, do you ever get tired on stage if it's a long show or does it just pass by? Um, in a good mood. Actually, the adrenaline kicks in, I, 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 and and then you're just there. You go. You know, it was Johnny's birthday party last night. We were up kind of late, and uh, we're all a little bit tired today. But I mean, I, I'm not worried about it. As soon as the stage happens, you know, all the adrenaline kicks in, the people are excited, you can't help but enjoy it, you know. Do you ever lose your focus on stage? If you have the ball or something? Um, 
it's it's funny. It's again, it's like kind of just being in a good headspace and enjoying it more than uh, trying to focus. You know what I mean? I think as soon as as soon as I fall out of step or, or, or space out or something, I go, "What the heck am I doing?" You know, you just quickly kind of snap back because we did so much homework before we got here. You know, and little things happen. Uh, the important thing is to not be uptight. Just have a laugh. You know, if I hit a bum note, we just kind of look. You know. Just kind of look at Johnny and laugh. There's no big deal, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a rock show. It's gonna be okay. Yeah. You know, but the main thing I think is for the fans is for to have a really loose, fun band, not to not to not be uptight. And um, but again, the the hard work ahead of time pays off. Like you know, if it, I might space out and go, oh my god, that woman in the crowd's beautiful, and then oh, what was I doing? <laughs> but it snaps back quickly. You know what I mean? So. Uh, Again, the homework's really important, and you were mentioning, you know, how, did, how has anything changed, you know, over the yeah. years. Really, nothing's changed. Uh, I'm living a little larger. We're flying around in a private jet and stuff uh, with these guys. Uh, it's quite awesome. But um, the, the, real, the, the real thing, the, the, the craft that I'm working has not changed. Right. Just, just honing it. Nothing changes when I was in my teens playing in little, in little bars and stuff to big shows. Nothing changes. Do the hard work in the beginning so you can enjoy it. You know, that's basically it. Have you done any mental practices? You told me you do yoga, mm -hmm. and that's as well mental as uh, physical. Yeah. Is there any other ways you prepare yourself or your? Um, you said running, stay focused. running, or whatever. I think it's clearing the mind is the most important thing. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Um, uh, clearing your mind so you don't have all this chatter and stuff. And I try and try and just have that quiet time before the show, where I'm not somewhere else. Just really clear your head out a little bit, and, um, and that's it. That's really it. You know, you you have to hone your craft, and. Um, you always work on it, but um, but again, you do the homework, and then everything falls into place, you know. And I've been doing it a long time, so uh, things happen every night that you don't expect on stage. Something might not sound right, you can't hear something, uh, maybe you knock yourself out of tune. But again, people, no one cares. They just want to see a good show, and they want to see you play well, of course. But I mean, like the little stuff's no big deal. So my biggest preparation is just that tranquility and yoga or running and that way I kind of restart reset my body for what's what's next the next show and I, I enjoy that um, I don't like too many people backstage and big you know like you know most of most of my musician friends are kind of similar to me they just look at quiet before the show and then you know the calm before the storm how important is the connection with the crowd when you're up on stage well it's really important um, They've been very excited on the Hollywood Vampires tour. I mean, they're just, uh, you know, you can feel it right when we walk out on the stage. And um, what a group to be in. I mean, you know, Alice Cooper and Joe Perry and Johnny Depp. You know, that's, that's, that's an amazing thing. And um, they seem connected right away. They're just eating it up, you know, eating it up. But I like to sing even when I'm not singing. Uh, on the mic, I like to sing along with the crowd, and I, I feel like when everyone's making eye contact and you're singing along, that's a great kind of connective thing. And I like to throw out, I don't play with a pick that much, but I like to throw picks out and try and get it right to the right to the person, it usually hits them here, here, or something right. like that, you know. And that's fun, and if they're not paying attention to me, sometimes uh, they'll get hit with a pick. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. And I'm getting better, you're getting a better aim. Sometimes I get it right to the girl's cleavage and it goes down. Okay. It's really funny because they're like, oh, wow. So uh, it's, it's, it's eye contact and singing along with them and, and, and you get big smiles back. And that's, that's what I like. Yeah. Yeah. You're a great musician and you've been playing a long time and having a great a long career. What are your keys to success? I think it's that formula of... of having the high standard for yourself first and then everything falls into place you know I, I work really hard on my uh, bass playing and, and being consistent and, and having my tone and um, you know taking that seriously you know what I mean uh, 
I think the key to success is having that high standard and not ever changing it. You know, so if I'm playing a little gig at a club, same preparation. You know, you got to think like a champion fighter. You know, you can't you can't be like, oh, this doesn't really matter. Why why bother doing it? You know, so um, having the high standards, uh, always practicing, not taking it lightly. There's tons of people paying to see us. You know, I don't take it lightly. You know, I want the, I want to deliver something and make them feel great about the fact that they came to the show, you know. And, and gelling with the band, have, being a fun hang with the band, and, and being sensitive to what's needed in songs and stuff like that, you know. But that's, that's all part of your standards for yourself, high standards for yourself. If you're going to be like kind of half-assed, it's just it's going to show. So if you really take it seriously, hone your craft, you know. I, I don't warm up too much, which is... Uh, kind of a thing because I've been playing for so long um, but I might, I might play a little bit in the day I have a practice bass a little Steinberger bass but right before the show I kind of just want to I want to play fresh you know that's kind of just, for some reason that's how I like to do it you know and um, it, again it's the years of preparation and practicing that, that makes it all consistent for me you know? how do you level up talent and hard work as a musician Um, What do you think about word talent? At well, all? I've seen guys that don't really have as much uh, natural talent put the hard work in and get pretty far. Um, and again, it's art. It's it's not sports, but you can kind of compare it to it and learn from uh, athletes as well. But uh, I think it's a, a lot of hard work is where it's at, you know, because you can get better. You can you can train yourself and make yourself better. So. Um, Sometimes some of the people with all the natural talent take it for granted and don't do the hard work. So you have to have that formula of hard work. You know, like when I was preparing for this, I would go over some of the songs are covers and some of the songs are originals and stuff. So um, I would go over it and over it and over it and really check out what the bass player did, you know, on the song, say if we're doing a Bowie or if we're doing... Um, you know, anything, uh, the doors even, or whatever, you know, really trying to find out what the song is all about and what's in the song and know, it, know, it, know exactly what's there so you can kind of take it from there if you want to uh, develop it. But yeah, no, no messing around. I hate when bass players don't learn the lines proper. They just kind of follow the roots and stuff like that. It's like the bass is part of the song, so, you know, um, having that diligence about that is really important. You know, I think that's why I get called for the film bands. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that to me is really important. So again, just do, do go for it 150 percent if you're going to do it. You know, I'm all about the bass, and I, I've made it my life. So you know, it's probably similar to like a, a sports person that just has to train every day and all that. You know, it's the same kind of thing. Is it your passion, or do you have any other passions in life? Yeah, it is. It is, and, and it's a vast thing to be into the uh, bass the way I am because there's so many styles, there's so many approaches, and the bow is another kind of beast all to itself, and the upright, and playing fretless versus fretted, and all this kind of stuff. So, it, it's a, yeah, it's my whole. I made it my whole life, you know, and uh, you know, just enjoying the travel and the different foods and different people and cultures and things that that, that I really enjoy. Instead of going to Starbucks, maybe find the local coffee places and things like that. Because you know, I, I know what Starbucks is, for example. So you know, it's like uh, food and and uh, music and all that stuff kind of uh, goes hand in hand with the traveling. It's really nice. Yeah. Any special place you want to go over and over again in the world? You'll be touring a lot. Uh, um, I really enjoy, uh, you know, I was born in New York, so that's a special place for me to always play. And I live in L.A., so that's really special. But um, I really enjoy playing in Italy because it's just uh, the food's so amazing. And uh, some of the best food in the world, I think, is in Italy. Um, but as far as, like, a live experience with the shows, I think South America, like Argentina and Brazil, is, is some of the most high-energy crowds I mean, the first time I did it, I guess maybe 20 years ago, I went down there and I was in a band uh, called The Cult for many years. 
and my first experience was playing with them down there and I just could not believe the crowd's energy the whole crowd pogoing and I remember thinking the balcony was going to fall down because they were jumping around so crazy I was like really amazed by the high energy so I, I would love to go play uh, Brazil with uh, an Argentina South American general with the Hollywood vampires I haven't done that with them so that would be a, a cool thing and um, I'm looking forward to uh, there's going to be more coming up later this year with Ace and uh, I heard about Japan possibly coming up for the vampires and all this stuff so you know Japan's an amazing place and again uh, different food, different culture. I like just kind of picking up all that from the people. And uh, but we're all the same. Everyone screams at the shows the same, you know. And it's really exciting. And uh, it's just nice to touch people with music like that, you know. And and learn a little bit back from all these different people, you know. And I used to teach, so that, that one of the things, yeah, one of the things I did like private lessons with bass, and I would learn so much just from my students. Just that different perspectives and different interests, you know. And I would look at things a little different. Like, oh, this guy wants to play polka music or something, you know. And it was just different kinds of people, different interests. So it, it's a very enriching lifestyle. Yeah. What about before the shows? Uh, are you ever nervous? Or were you nervous before, like, say, 20 years ago? Or no. I, you know, it was real natural for me. The stage, is, the stage is more natural than sometimes just walking around and... and in, in your normal days, because stage is, uh, I don't know, I just have, I had that passion for it. And the only time I've ever got, get nervous is if there's something that wasn't prepared enough or we're throwing something new in there and we didn't go over it enough. So I might get a little concerned, but there's really no nerves. You know, stage is home, home base. Sounds good. Yeah. How do you cope with the people because you're a famous guy, a famous player, and People around the world know you and come to talk to you. Is it okay? How do you? Do That's a total that? privilege. You know, if people know me, it's a total privilege. I mean, um, I've been associated with some very famous people. You know, I've, I, I, like I mentioned, the cult. I've played with Ace Frehley. Um, these guys. I mean, my gosh, uh, Johnny Depp is very famous, and uh, you know, I'm learning from him. He's very gracious. You know, he's he's got mobs of people waiting for him everywhere. And he goes out and enjoys meeting them and signing things for them and stuff. So it's a privilege. So uh, you might be in a mood or whatever. You don't have to ever be rude. You can just wave and smile and maybe, maybe you need to get some sleep that night and not stand and sign things. But you can always be nice and smile. I think people appreciate that. But for the most part, we all, all the guys in this band, take time to uh, go out and sign a few things and say hello. I mean, that's what we're here for, right? So... Uh, I don't think it's the greatest attitude to kind of just be like, oh, all these people want to see me and say hi. I don't yeah. understand that. Wrong business, that you Yeah, maybe yeah. in the wrong thing, you know. So uh, I, it's a total privilege. Yeah. And I'm privileged to have you here. Thank oh, you very much. Me for too. Coming. Thank you very much for Coming the uh, show. A couple more questions in, in general. Like, in life, uh, what makes you feel down? What makes me feel down? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I think it, it's, it's too much focusing on yourself and, and you know, like, um, you know, depression and stuff like that. It's big in the news right now. You know, you know, there's been some, you know, suicides and things like that. And, uh, it's funny. It's, it's, it can be in, it, it, there's an illness and stuff out there, but I think you have to have purpose in life some sort of higher purpose and for me it's my family and my friends and um, connecting with people I think keeps you in, in a good perspective you know we all have our blue days or whatever but I always remind myself like man I'm living a fantastic very very uh, interesting life so the, the only thing that gets me down is, is probably probably focusing on myself too much <laughs> you know what I mean just snap out of it enjoy people and new friends and old friends and uh, you know I just called my mom and dad and it's just great to have that relationship and uh, nothing really gets me too down just my, my own head my own thoughts you know it's really important to, to we're talking about this a lot it keeps coming up but clear the head out 
you know, be careful of what you're repeating to yourself, you know, because you can very quickly change it, you know, and um, again, I've seen a lot of people, a lot of musicians have depression and stuff like that. Just focus on some, somebody else. There's, there's no need to get stuck like that. You think yeah. we're able to change our mindset? I think the mindset's the most important, you know, and everything follows. I know as soon as I change my attitude, I notice things change around me right away. And we are vibrating pitch and energies, you know, so uh, people pick up on that. So I think um, you have your head straight. You know what I love is uh, the power of now from Eckhart and the uh, power of positive thinking. Yeah, I know that. And some of the, uh, these books I can just read and listen to over and over again. You just, you cannot go wrong with those. No. And as soon as you just give, give yourself 10 minutes of that and go off and do your day, you know, it's, it's, it's going to tune you in the right direction. You know, and enjoy all the good things in life. You know, it's it's funny. You know, it's it's not my first barbecue, so to speak, playing on stage and playing. But you got to really appreciate it. You got to go back to when you were starting out and remember, like, man, I would just die to be up there and do that. You know what I mean? And you know, it's just there's a lot of great stuff to appreciate, positive stuff every day. You know, and sometimes just the simple days are great. You know, we had a. We had a day off yesterday, and we had a nice birthday dinner for Johnny, and it was just really wonderful. So, uh, focusing on other people, whatever I feel a lack of, you know, change your thinking and see what you got. You know, see what you have. Uh, think in surplus. You know what I mean? Think about all the things you do have. So, that's kind of something we all struggle with. But I think just get off, get get off your own. For me, I just get out of my own head. Oh, I don't have this going on, I don't have that going on. That's, that's not going to do anything for you. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I try and tune my head a little more uh, positively. I hear you. That's what I'm trying to do for myself. Yeah, we're all that's trying to do it. It's really yeah. important to remember that, though. But it's good to know that there are some methods to do that. I think really so. Focus, like you said, the audio books or books, reading books and people. Yeah, yeah. Teaching ourselves, learning more. It, you know, I... I a friend turned me on to the power of now, maybe 20 years ago or something like that. And uh, at first it was like, it just says the same thing of what's going on here. And then it clicked. That's a great one. That's a great help. And Dalai Lama, The Art of Happiness, is a pretty great one too. You know, So uh, those kinds of things help me a lot. And music can turn you on to a whole, like if you, you're inspired by a song, you just play it over and over again, maybe in the gym or whatever. That, that can really do a lot for you. Music can transform you and, and help you envision what you want and how you think about the world. You know? So I, I utilize that a lot, definitely. I think you pretty much said it already about this. It's sort of a standard question here at Surfer of Life, the final one, is what makes you happy? I think connecting with people, uh, make, making new friends, connecting with people, um, and, uh, and, and enjoying that, you know. Uh, I probably get in my own way and isolate at times like that and as soon as I change my head again, boom, that makes me happy. Family and friends, you know, and music. Thank you so much, Grace. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. My pleasure. Have a great show. Thank I will be watching. You. Great.